This is Savita Valsang and welcome to my channel Statistics Made Simple. In this video, I'll find solutions to problems based on the t-test for equality of means. Problem 1. A certain model of a car is sold by a leading dealer in a city. A sample of 6 months sales by the dealer shows sales of 80, 65, 73, 60, 78, 82. After announcing a loan scheme, a sample of 8 months sales are 68, 76, 80, 65, 68, 78, 90 and 77. Can we conclude that the mean sales has increased after the announcement of the loan scheme? Use 1% level of significance. In this problem, the word mean is used and we have a sample of 6 months before the loan scheme and have a sample of 8 months after a loan scheme was announced. And we see that N1 is equal to 6 and N2 is equal to 8 which are less than 30. So this problem is based on t-test for equality of means. So let us write down the values which are given. Under solution write given n1 is 6, n2 is 8 and alpha is 1%. Now in the red colored box which is highlighted on the right hand side of this slide, we have the before loan scheme. The mean sales is denoted by mu1 and after the loan scheme, the mean sales is denoted by mu2. Now in the last part of the question, they have asked us to check whether the mean sales has increased after the announcement of the loan scheme. So they have asked us to check if mu2 is greater than mu1. But when we write the alternative hypothesis, we write mu1 first and then mu2. So which implies mu1 is less than mu2. Let us now write h0. The two population means are equal that is mu1 is equal to mu2 versus h1 mu1 is less than mu2. Under h0 the test statistic is t equal to x bar minus y bar divided by capital S into root of 1 by n1 plus 1 by n2 which follows t n1 plus n2 minus 2 degrees of freedom. And capital S square has the formula summation x minus x bar the whole square plus summation y minus y bar the whole square divided by n1 plus n2 minus 2. We are using this formula for capital S square because two sets of data are given. That is the x values are given and the y values are given for the two samples. Let's form the first table with the 6 month sales as x that is 80, 65, 73, 60, 78, 82. Next we calculate summation x which is equal to 438. Let us now calculate the mean for the first sample. So consider x bar equal to summation x by n1 which is 438 divided by 6. So you get x bar is equal to 73. Next, let us calculate x minus x bar the whole square. So take the first value 80, subtract it from 73, we will get 7. And when we square 7, we get 49. Similarly, take each x value subtracted from 73 and square it. So the remaining x minus x bar whole square values are 64, 0, 169, 25, 81 which gives summation x minus x bar the whole square as 388. Let us form another table with the y values that is the sales for the second sample that is 68, 76, 80, 65, 82, 78, 90 and 77. Summation y is equal to 616. We now calculate y bar which is the mean of the second sample and has the formula summation y divided by n2 which is equal to 613 divided by 8 which is equal to 77. Let's calculate y minus y bar whole square values 
take the first value 68 subtract it from 77 we get minus 9 minus 9 square is 81 in a similar way every y value is subtracted from the mean which is 77 and squared so the remaining y minus y bar whole square values are 1 9 144 25 1 169 and 0 therefore we get summation y minus y bar whole square is equal to 430 Substituting in S square, we get S square is equal to 388 plus 430 divided by 6 plus 8 minus 2 which is equal to 818 divided by 12 that is equal to 68.1667 but we require the value of S which is nothing but root of 68.1667 therefore S is equal to 8.2563. Substituting all these values in the test statistic t, we get t equal to 73 minus 77 divided by 8.2563 into root of 1 by 6 plus 1 by 8 which is equal to minus 4 divided by 8.2563 into root of 0 0.1667 plus 0 0.125. which is equal to minus 4 divided by 8.2563 into root of 0 0.2917 which is equal to minus 4 divided by 8.2563 into 0 0.5401 on further simplification we get t equal to minus 0 0.8970 now this particular test is a left tail test the condition which we use for a left tail test is you have to check whether t is less than minus t alpha by 2. If this condition is satisfied then we reject h0 otherwise we accept h0. So let us first calculate the degrees of freedom which is n1 plus n2 minus 2 which is equal to 6 plus 8 minus 2 which is equal to 12. So at 1% level of significance for 12 degrees of freedom from the statistical tables for the t test we have minus t alpha is equal to minus 2.68 now let us write the conclusion since t is equal to minus 0 0.8970 is not less than minus t equal to minus 2.68 at 1% level of significance for 12 degrees of freedom we accept h0 and conclude that mu1 is equal to mu2 Problem 2. The marks obtained by 5 students are 34, 37, 37, 42, 35. The marks obtained by 7 students are 28, 31, 37, 38, 23, 26, 27. Test whether the mean of the first group is greater than the second group. Now in this problem we have 2 groups of students. The first group having 5 students and the second group having 7 students. The values 5 and 7 are the two sample sizes and these are less than 30. Also the word mean is used in the problem so this particular problem is based on t-test for equality of means. Let us write down under solution given n1 is equal to 5, n2 is equal to 7 and alpha is 5% as it is not mentioned in the problem. Next we write h0 the two population means are equal that is mu1 is equal to mu2 versus h1 mu1 is greater than mu2. So the alternative here is a right tail test because they have asked us to check whether the mean of the first group that means mu1 is greater than the mean of the second group that is mu2. So because of the word greater than it is a right tail test. Under H0 the test statistic is t equal to x bar minus y bar divided by capital S into root of 1 by n1 plus 1 by n2 which follows t with n1 plus n2 minus 2 degrees of freedom and capital S square is calculated using the formula summation x minus x bar the whole square plus summation y minus y bar the whole square divided by n1 plus n2 minus 2.
I will now form a table with the x values that is the values in the first sample 34, 37, 37, 42, 35. So summation x is equal to 85. Let us now calculate x bar which is equal to summation x by n1 which is equal to 185 divided by 5. So we get x bar is equal to 37. Next we need to calculate x minus x bar the whole square. It is 34 minus 37 is minus 3 minus 3 square is 9. Similarly the remaining x minus x bar whole square values are 0, 0, 25, 4 which gives summation x minus x bar the whole square is equal to 38. Next let us calculate y bar. So form another table with the y values as 28, 31, 37, 38, 23, 26 and 27 which gives summation y equal to 210. Then write the formula for y square which is equal to summation y by n2 which is 210 divided by 7 which gives y bar is equal to 30. Next let us calculate y minus y bar the whole square. So find out 28 minus 30 which is minus 2 minus 2 square is 4. Similarly the remaining y minus y bar whole square values are 1, 49, 64, 49, 16 and 9 which gives summation y minus y bar the whole square is equal to 192. Substituting these totals in S square we get 38 plus 192 divided by 5 plus 7 minus 2 is equal to 230 by 10 or S square is equal to 23 which implies S is root 23 therefore S is equal to 4.7958. Substituting in T we get T equal to 37 minus 30 divided by 4.7958 into root of 1 by 5 plus 1 by 7 which is equal to 7 divided by 4.7958 into root of 0 0.2 plus 0 0.1429 which is equal to 7 divided by 4.7958 into root of 0 0.3429 which is equal to 7 divided by 4.7958 into 0 0.5856 which is equal to 7 divided by 2.8084. Therefore, T is equal to 2.4925. Let us now calculate the degrees of freedom which is N1 plus N2 minus 2 which is equal to 5 plus 7 minus 2 which is equal to 10. Now the condition used for a right tail test is you have to check if T is greater than T alpha at alpha level of significance for N1 plus N2 minus 2 degrees of freedom. If this condition is satisfied then we reject H0 otherwise we accept H0. So at 5% level of significance for 10 degrees of freedom T alpha is 1.81. The conclusion since T is equal to 2.4925 is greater than T alpha equal to 1.81 at 5% level of significance for 10 degrees of freedom we reject H0 and conclude that mu1 is greater than mu2. Problem 3. In a city, the number of criminal cases for 4 years were 100, 120, 90 and 110 respectively. After taking some measures like intensifying the punishment, the cases for the next few years were found to be 80, 73, 70 and 68 respectively. Test at 5% level of significance if there is any significant reduction in the mean number of crimes. Now again in this problem the word mean is present and you have two sets of data that is the number of criminal cases for four years and then again you have another set of data where they have intensified the punishment and noted down the number of cases for the next four years. And we observe that n1 is equal to 4 and n2 is equal to 4 so both the sample sizes are less than 30. So this particular problem is based on the t-test for equality of means. Under solution, first write given n1 is equal to 4, n2 is equal to 4 and alpha is 5%. Next write h0, the two population means are equal that is mu1 is equal to mu2. 
versus h1 mu1 is greater than mu2 now in the red colored box i have highlighted that before punishment the mean number of crimes is denoted by mu1 and after punishment the mean number of crimes is denoted by mu2 now in the question they have asked us to check if there is any significant reduction in the mean number of crimes so in other words they are asking whether mu2 is less than mu1 but whenever we write the alternative hypothesis we need mu1 first and then mu2 so which implies mu1 is greater than mu2 so this particular problem has a right tailed alternative then under h0 the test statistic is t equal to x bar minus y bar divided by capital s into root of 1 by 1 by n1 plus 1 by n2 which follows t n1 plus n2 minus 2 degrees of freedom where s square is equal to summation x minus x bar the whole square plus summation y minus y bar the whole square divided by n1 plus n2 minus 2. Form a table with the x values as 100, 120, 90 and 110 which gives summation x is equal to 420. Next calculate x bar using the formula summation x by n1 which is 420 divided by 4 which gives x bar is equal to 105. Let us now calculate x minus x bar the whole square. Take the first value 100 subtract it from 105 you get 5. 5 square is 25. Similarly, the remaining x minus x bar whole square values are 225, 225 and 25 which gives summation x minus x bar whole square is equal to 500. Let us form another table with the y values as 80, 73, 70, 68 which gives summation y equal to 291. Then using the formula y bar equal to summation y by n2 we get equal to 291 divided by 4 or y bar is equal to 72.75. Now let us calculate y minus y bar whole square values. Take the first value 80 subtracted from 72.75 1.25 and then squaring it we get 52.5625. In a similar way, the remaining y minus y bar whole square values are found which are 0 0.0625, 7.5625, 22 which gives summation y minus y bar whole square as 82.75. Substituting in S squared, we get S squared is equal to 500 plus 82.75 divided by 4 plus 4 minus 2 which is equal to 582.75 divided by 6. Therefore, S squared is 97.125 which implies S is equal to root of 97.125. Therefore, S is 9.8552. Substituting these values in the test statistic, we get T equal to 105 minus 72.75 divided by 9.8552 into root of 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 which is equal to 32.25 divided by 9.8552 into root of 0 0.25 plus 0 0.25. to 32.25 divided by 9.8552 into root of 0.5 which gives 32.25 divided by 9.8552 into 0 0.7071 which is equal to 32.25 divided by 6.9686 therefore t is equal to 4.6279 now the degrees of freedom is n1 plus n2 minus 2 which is equal to 4 plus 4 minus 2 which is equal to 6. Now the condition which we use for a right tail test is you have to check if t is greater than t alpha at alpha level of significance for n1 plus n2 minus 2 degrees of freedom. If this condition is satisfied you reject h0 otherwise you accept h0. So at 5% level of significance for 6 degrees of freedom T alpha is equal to 1.94 from the statistical tables for the t-test. Now the conclusion 
since t is 4.6279 and this is greater than t alpha equal to 1.94 at 5% level of significance for 6 degrees of freedom, we reject h0 and conclude that mu1 is greater than mu2. Problem 4. A bulb manufacturing company decides to purchase wires from either brand X or brand Y for its new model. An experiment is conducted using 10 bulbs having X wires and 12 bulbs having Y wires. The wires are used till they burn out and the following results were obtained. Test at 1% level of significance if there is any significant difference between the mean life of bulbs of the two brands. So the table which is given has the columns brand X and brand Y and the mean life and the variances for both the brands are given respectively as 1010 hours, 1020 hours, 100 hours and 80 hours. So all the values are already given to us in the problem. As we observe there are two brands that is brand X and brand Y and the word mean and variance are used. And if we observe N1 is equal to 10 and N2 is equal to 12 that is N1 and N2 are both less than 30. So this is the T test for equality of means. So under solution right given N1 is 10, N2 is 12 then from the table X bar is 1010, Y bar is 1020, S1 square is 100, S2 square is 80 and alpha is 1%. H0 is the two population means are equal that is mu1 is equal to mu2 versus H1 mu1 is not equal to mu2. In this problem the words like increase, decrease, above, below are not used and they have asked us to check if there is any significant difference so it will be a two-tailed alternative. Under H0, the test statistic is T equal to X bar minus Y bar divided by capital S into root of 1 by N1 plus 1 by N2 which follows T N1 plus N2 minus 2 degrees of freedom. Here, S square is calculated using the formula N1 S1 squared plus N2 S2 squared divided by N1 plus N2 minus 2. We are using this formula for S square because the sample variances are given. So S square is equal to 10 into 100 plus 12 into 80 divided by 10 plus 12 minus 2 which is equal to 1000 plus 960 by 20 or S square is equal to 1960 divided by 20 which is equal to 98 which implies S is equal to root of 98 therefore S is 9.8995. Substituting all the values in the test statistic, we get T equal to 1010 minus 1020 divided by 9.8995 into root of 1 by 10 plus 1 by 12 which is equal to minus 10 divided by 9.8995 into root of 0 0.1 plus 0 0.0833 which is equal to minus 10 divided by 9.8995 into root of 0 0.1833 which is equal to minus 10 by 9.8995 into 0 0.4281 which is equal to minus 10 divided by 4.2379 which gives t equal to minus 2.3597. Now this test is a two-tailed test. The condition which is used for a two-tailed test is you have to check if modulus of t is greater than t alpha by 2 at alpha level of significance for n1 plus n2 minus 2 degrees of freedom. If this condition is satisfied you reject h0 otherwise you accept h0. So let us now calculate modulus of t which is equal to modulus of minus 2.3597 therefore we get modulus of t is equal to 2.3597 because the modulus of a negative number becomes positive. The degrees of freedom is calculated using the formula n1 plus n2 minus 2 which is equal to 10 plus 12 minus 2 which is equal to 20. At 1% level of significance for 20 degrees of freedom 
t alpha is equal to 2.85 from the statistical tables. Conclusion, since modulus of t is equal to 2.3597 is not greater than t alpha by 2 which is equal to 2.85 at 1% level of significance for 20 degrees of freedom we accept h0 and conclude that mu1 is equal to mu2. Problem 5. The means and variances of four observations are 2.08 and 1.02 respectively and that of five observations are 2.86 and 3.11 respectively. Test whether the mean of the first set of observations is less than the second set. Under solution, write given n1 is 4, x bar is 2.08. S1 square is 1.02, N2 is 5, Y bar is 2.86, S2 square is 3.11 and alpha is 5%. Since N1 and N2 are less than 30, this problem is based on equality of means for small samples and hence we use the T statistic. H notice the two population means are equal that is mu1 is equal to mu2 versus h1 mu1 is less than mu2. Under h0 the test statistic is t equal to x bar minus y bar divided by capital S into root of 1 by n1 plus 1 by n2 which follows t n1 plus n2 minus 2 where s square is equal to n1 s1 square plus n2 s2 square divided by n1 plus n2 minus 2. Substituting in S square, we get 4 into 1.02 plus 5 into 3.11 divided by 4 plus 5 minus 2 which is equal to 4.08 plus 15.55 divided by 7. So S square is equal to 19.63 divided by 7 which is equal to 2.8043 which implies S is equal to root of 2.8043 or S is 1.6746. Substituting the all the values in t, we get t is equal to 2.08 minus 2.86 divided by 1.6746 into root of 1 by 4 plus 1 by 5 which is equal to minus 0 0.78 divided by 1.6746 into root of 0 0.25 plus 0 0.2. Further simplification, we get t equal to minus 0 0.78 divided by 1.6746 into root of 0 0.45 which is equal to minus 0 0.78 divided by 1.6746 into 0 0.6708 that is equal to minus 0 0.78 divided by 1.1233 or t is equal to minus 0 0.6944. The degrees of freedom is n1 plus n2 minus 2 which is equal to 4 plus 5 minus 2 which is equal to 7. Now this particular test is a left tail test and the condition which is used to reject h0 is you have to check if t is less than minus t alpha. So at 5% level of significance for 7 degrees of freedom minus t alpha is minus 1.90. Conclusion, since t is equal to minus 0 0.6944 is not less than minus t alpha which is equal to minus 1.90 at 5% level of significance for 7 degrees of freedom we accept h0 and conclude that mu1 is equal to mu2. The problems based on the t-test for equality of means are important and the calculations are quite lengthy. So do be careful with the calculations. Thank you all for watching and look out for my next video where I'll explain the procedure for the paired t-test which is again an important topic.